Okay, so a bunch of people have asked me uh, about the rework for the PTR, the itemization changes, etc. And sort of, is it enough? Is Diablo 4 great now? Is it a 10 out of 10 and all these types of questions? And so I'm going to kind of break down my feeling on what I actually think about this. Now, in the previous video, I talked about and showed what the changes actually are and gave you a brief like two minute synopsis of if it was a thumb up or thumb down. But for me, it really feels like this. It feels like the game has launched now in a state with the PTR where it feels like a one point or the game is effectively out of beta. Things like the minions, for instance, actually now do something. You just take a look at this, the minions inherit all of your stats, so now they actually DPS like crazy, and they're just significantly, significantly better, even if I don't help them at all, just significantly more aggressive and better than they used to be prior to any of these changes, and that is significant for anyone that actually likes the summoner style of gameplay. But this is just one such example of times that I would go into Diablo 4 before and be unimpressed or uninspired with some of the gameplay that I had experienced. Necromancer minions being one of these common things we've seen since the beginning of the game. And so that theme of, oh, I didn't like it what it was before and now it is what it should have been seems to be a common reoccurring theme for me. Another example of this would be the Helltides. The Helltides now basically have what I would consider probably the highest density in the game once you get this threat meter going. They've taken a lot of the mechanics from the other seasons and thrown them into here. But just the amount of mobs themselves, like the actual, like I say, the density of the mobs feels like now what you would think a blood tide actually should have been. Just a whole bunch of minions overrun overrunning an area. The XP is good, the farming's good. So it's it's better, way better. And Helltide was usually like my least favorite part of the game. Now it's one of the better parts. So while I was live streaming, I just finished a 151 hour straight live stream Right, that's why I have a bed in the background and everything, and we did our first subathon on the stream. Uh, while we were doing that, I did a lot of testing this PTR, and one of the common questions I was always getting was, uh, well, what's the point of items, and what's the point of you know the core being fixed if there's still no in-game, et cetera? And one of the analogies or metaphors that I would have to kind of come back to is, well, let's say you were overweight. And what you wanted to do was be a shredded bodybuilder. Like the very first thing you're going to do is reduce your weight. And I kind of feel like that's what they were doing with this here. Like you can't really make the in game and like have all of these other things that are built upon your pregame, like actually having items and what your character's power structure is. They're obviously going to have to rebalance everything, etc. So I think getting the itemization in the core of your character correct is the first step. You gotta lose the weight then you can even see a six pack once you acquire one. So I think that that was basically what's happening here. They get the itemization right. They added a couple of new in-game things like the greater rift farming. So I think greater rifts will be divisive. I think some people will like them because there's no objectives. You just get into the rifts. Uh, you know, they, I even forget what they call them, the pit, okay? But it's basically great rifts. You get into it, you kill things, you go to the next level, you kill things very quick, very efficient, straight to the boss. It's just fast, fun, arcade style gameplay. You just blow through things. So uh, some people are gonna like that. Some people are gonna see it as uninspired and directly from D3. And both of these takes would basically be correct at this point. But I don't really think we're gonna see much of like ultra in-game mechanics that like seasonal based in-game mechanics until we had this itemization core correct. We have the new level 200 uber bosses, etc., which is, you can probably argue new in-game, but they're kind of like the other bosses, but just stronger, right? So I think now that we have what is, in my opinion, a much better core, they should be able to build upon that core going forward. So if you're wondering that yourself, like, okay, well, the items are there, but is the rest of the game, well, the rest of the game is sort of what the rest of the game was. But the itemization itself and the building of your character is what it should have been. There is one other change that I don't think is making the rounds in terms of how large I believe it actually is. And I could be wrong about this, but this is just something I'm noticing, which is, okay, so you have these items right here. These are just the base items that I start with, but every now and then you're gonna get these greater affixes. And items are now tradable. Uh, the base items are tradable and, and uniques are tradable as well, just not the uber uniques, right? So because of that, and because of the fact that greater affixes are fairly rare, but you can get multiple of these, like you can get a unique that has all four as greater affixes, for instance, this sort of revitalizes the trading economy and makes it where acquiring these greater affixes gives you tremendous value of each one of these items. 
and uni uniques and legendaries are tradable now. Now, rares are basically worthless other than you know crafting materials. You're gonna need them and salvage them for crafting materials, et cetera. But the legendary and uniques now will probably have an economy based around them. And because of the way that there's now these uber, uber bosses like level 200 ones, et cetera, and the materials are probably even more important for that regard because as you kill the new uber ubers, you're getting the resplendent sparks from killing them that will also give you uh, the ability to craft an uber unique, which is non-tradable, for instance. You sort of have reasons to trade, sell things in order to acquire materials, et cetera. So I think this is going to have impact on the long term of trading in a very healthy way for people that like that side of the game. Because I remember some of the comments we were seeing in the beginning of Diablo 4 was that uh, trading's dead, it's a open world, but a single player game. Like some of these sort of meme comments that were like little, you know, correct, a little harsh, but correct, basically. Uh, the impact that I think we're having on opening up the legendary and uniques, because back in the day when we were saying they'd show this, this rework, etc., one of the questions I had asked was, are we going are these going to be tradable and it was like no uh you know this isn't tradable etc but it looks like they're actually making they're actually opening that up which is significant in my opinion for people that like to interact with other players so that's just one like wave impact we're going to see from this earthquake here tldr is trading's better i also quite like the master working and because the master working doesn't take a crazy amount of the materials from the pit uh, and the pit actually is decently generous in terms of how many they give you as you go through it, even at the lower levels. I think the master working isn't going to be a frustrating farming part of the game, for instance, like we see with hell tides. The only part that I could be wrong about for this is the veiled crystals that you get from salvaging rare equipment, for instance, uh, could be slightly annoying because you're not really getting rare equipment as much as the rares don't really have as much of an impact. Now I could salvage all materials, and I'll do this just here for the video real fast. So if I go here and I salvage all my materials, okay, destroy all my materials. Well, that's all my legendaries, etc. but there's no veiled crystals. But when you actually look at veiled crystals in order to farm them, it says from rare or better equipment. So, you know, the getting veiled crystals seem to be fairly rare. So there's still a use for rare items, even if it's just for salvage material to buff up your legendary items. Now, if I was forced to have a complaint still about the game, I would say that I don't necessarily enjoy farming the boss materials. However, that being said, if I think their goal is, no, we want you to farm these boss materials, they just are trying to make it their job to make sure it's more enjoyable to acquire the materials in order to actually farm the bosses. This is why I'm noticing you kill goblins, etc. you're getting Livian Steel. On the occasion, you'll kill like an elite mob and you'll drop a boss material, etc. I'm noticing like the world bosses, you know, gain Distilled Fear, Exquisite Blood, all these things. So it, it does factually seem like I'm getting more of the boss materials and during the leveling process, I'm sure I I can start acquiring some of these as I pursue to level 100 so that by the time I'm at level 100, I probably have enough for maybe like one boss rotation for a couple of these bosses, etc. Plus with trade, maybe being a little bit more revitalized in the economy, that will give us more of a focus on that for trade as well as interacting with other players. So you can get in those rotations for those boss farms, etc. You have one set, you get three other people who have the one set, now you can kill the boss four times, for instance. I think we're going to see a lot more of the types of players who just farmed it themselves now interacting with more players as there is more of a reason to both through trade they'll get used to that and then start doing it with boss farming groups etc overall i'm actually pretty positive about what i've seen from the ptr i said this in the previous video i like it quite a lot my impression of it is this is basically what the launch of the game should have probably been and now they're coming back from the deficit and building upon it. And we'll have to see how the season four mechanics, et cetera, interact with it. I wonder if they have a lot more planned for season four or if the stuff on PTR we're seeing is basically the entirety of season four. I don't know. I don't know if any of us really know at this point. So I'm curious to see if they have even more things planned to add on to this, as I do feel like the base of the game is much more solid at this point. And if you are someone who's a summoner style, the, the one that play Necromancer with minions, and you're like, why is the Necromancer like, a caster base like a dark caster you know bone spear and all that and blood magic seems to be you know the the crux of what people were using now the minions are actually like 
pretty banging. So I like that change as well. And I'm noticing I'm liking more of the changes and they seem to be giving into allowing your characters to have some power behind them. I mean, I've seen people doing like the the double uh, dust devil swing thing for Barbarian that's just covering the entire screen. The uh, minion necromancers are now strong. So they're giving into that power fantasy a little bit with each of the characters. And I think that's a pretty good step in the right direction to use an old line. The next step for me is really uh, to make a new character and do the leveling process. I think I'll probably do that tomorrow as I'm taking the day off stream since I did 151 hours straight. Uh, tomorrow, I think I will make a fresh character and do the leveling process from one to 100 on the Diablo 4 character and see how the PTR changes affect the leveling process. And that will tell us how the rest of the game is actually going. But in terms of how it feels currently from the PTR boosted characters, I'm quite liking what I'm seeing. But that's just it. Love you all. I'll see you on the next video.